So we're good to negative 40. Winter's coming, the cows are getting fuzzy. We moved our shelter, it's on clean ground now and we also have the opening so it faces south. Here was where our corral structure was before and now we've turned it 90 degrees and successfully moved it with the tractor without killing either one of us or wrecking the structure so that's a plus. Here is the final corral set up. We also added two more cattle panels. We bought a new fancy gate. Now we're working on creating three large winter paddocks. With winter coming, uh, we want to go ahead and add a roof to it uh, to keep the hay dry and also keep our minerals dry. We got the water system ready. We have an in-tank uh, water heater and we also removed the float valve. This is the type of tank de-icer we got. It sits in the bottom of the tank. To protect the cord, we have some two inch PVC pipe. Additionally, for safety, we grounded the tank. We don't have a barn yet. This winter, all of our facilities are really quite temporary. So we lack things like a frost-free hydrant right next to the stock tank. Instead of walking out the hose manually, I made this air gun that hooks to our air compressor with garden hose threads so we can just blow out the lines between use. Here we are at the quail igloo now. We covered our quail hut in plastic to kind of get a greenhouse effect in the winter. And then we also installed a light on a timer so that they're getting about 14 hours of light during the daytime and we have a heated waterer. Otherwise, my two quail that I still have are doing very well and they're still laying eggs. We've been working hard to get the red tractor ready. Uh, we got the plow uh, for plowing snow all fixed up. We took the skid shoes into the local welding shop, had them hard face the bottom because they were getting a little worn. Uh, we got our tire chains ready for the cub and we put wheel weights on the rear axle. So. Uh, once we get a little closer to feeling like snow is going to fly, we'll go ahead and get all this stuff mounted on. Got to check the coolant and all of our equipment. Make sure we have adequate freeze protection. What we want to do is we want to count the number of colored balls that are floating. Right now, there's four. And that gives us protection down to negative 25. So at the farm all cub, we got all five floating so we're good to negative 40. Using an old pallet, some scrap wood, and leftover metal from the house we built this wood shed to store firewood for the shop. This will keep it dry and available for use and it's right near the shop door so it's easy to get. One of the last things we had to do to get our house ready for winter was we had to insulate underneath the floor and insulate the upstairs. Fun times were had by all. Today's my birthday, so we decided it'd be a great day to go ahead and insulate the underside of the house. Here we are in the crawl space, and I don't know if I can adequately describe how much this sucks. Happy birthday! Upstairs, we already had spray foam in our roof, which we had had an issue with, but now everything's fine with it. I can tell more about that later. We didn't have any insulation in the gable walls, so we put up our rock wool in our gable walls, and now the entire upstairs is insulated and we're ready to finish it. Since we now have a generator for the farm, we needed to add a plug on our main panel and an interlock switch. So now, when the power goes out, we can plug in. We got the pump house heater turned on. We went ahead and got our snow tires put on the Jeep. So these tires are actually walnut shell tires. So they have little bits of ground up walnut shell embedded in the rubber. This is our second year with them, especially crossing the pass multiple times. We were really impressed. 